and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast and welcome to Transfer Hub, your home of Aston Villa's rumours, links, news, you'll name it, you'll find it on this channel. So we have another link, Roger Ibanez from Roma, central defender, predominantly playing on the left-hand side of a three at the back for Roma, technically a five at the back, but he's playing on that left-hand side as a sort of centre half. So another defender linked with Aston Villa. And we're still being linked with defenders. So there's something in these defenders. And I think Unai is cooking something for Aston Villa. And I think potentially it may look something slightly different to what we have seen since Unai Emery's been at Aston Villa, we know he's had to work with the personnel that he'd got. So now he can get his hands on the Aston Villa squad recruitment-wise. It's so interesting to see who we're now linked with. After signing Pau Torres and Marquis signing for Aston Villa, we're now linked with another defender who is playing in a centre-half. So... Let's dive into it. Let's get your thoughts. We'll unravel and we'll try and figure out what this means for the squad and the defence. Villa fans, in the comment section down below, let me know what you think of us being linked with another defender and what does this mean for our defence. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, shout out to you all who watched the Ferran Torres episode. Absolutely mental absolutely mental we smashed the thousand like mark obliterated it which was absolutely mad so let's have one on this one we'll go 600 on this one let's see if we can get 600 likes on this one uh, so let's have a look at robert roger ibn as <laughs> robert roger uh, so let's have a look then where this link has come from then so it's coming from sky sports uh, Villa to swoop for Ibanez. Roma defender Roger Ibanez is reportedly a transfer target for Aston Villa. Roma have signed Evan and Dicca from Eintracht Frankfurt, uh, but the reports claim that Roma will not consider offers below thir 25 to 30 million for the 24 year old who is in the Brazilian national team. Roma also have an option to buy. Uh, Leeds defender Lorente, who spent the second half of the season at the club on loan. So that's where it's come from. Um, so let's talk about Ibanez. Very strong. Very, very strong. Powerful. He's an absolute unit. Absolute unit. He's like, when he sees that ball, it's like a dog to a bone. He's just got Get that football. I want that football. It's a bit like, um, what's that film? Uh, and uh, the goalkeeper's in goal. And he just he just keeps, like, taking everybody out. He reminds me of that when you watch him. Uh, he just loves the ball. He wants it. He wants to clear it. He wants to tackle. He loves a slide tackle. Uh, so he's so strong. It reminds me a bit of, like, Robertson's tenacity of from Liverpool, you know, how he's like tenacious, he wants the ball. Um, so yeah, really, really strong. Um, so powerful. As another plus point, he can bag a goal off a corner, which we have been crying out for for absolutely ages. So he's a threat from set pieces, you know, he, he loves a header, loves a bullet header. Um, so that's a that's a massive positive as well because that's an area that we definitely need to improve on for next season as well. So where where does this put us in this situation? Because I know a lot of you will be thinking we don't need another defender, and I can I slightly can see where you're coming from if you're thinking that. But this leads me on to thinking that we are going in a different direction in defence. Now, I spoke about when we were linked with centre-backs and I said that would possibly mean that concert would go to right-back, which I still think is a legitimate possibility. But now with another defender coming in, 
we kind of like going to have quite a lot of central defenders. And I know we've still got that argument of we need a squad. We need, um, we need sort of a squad to have, diff you know, because we're going to play in a lot of games. I get that. But it leads me to think of who, who would play where. So we know Mings and Torres like to play as the left-hand side of uh, the defence. So would this possibly mean that you would have Ibanez playing here, Mings playing here, and Torres playing here? Or would it be Mings here and Torres here? Or would it be Konsa here? Is Mings out? So there's loads of different options, but it really does push me to think that these three defenders here are going to be centre-backs. You know, with this Ibanez link, we're not linked with a right-back. We haven't really been linked with a right-back all window. So if you're thinking that we need a right-back because Young's gone and we've only got cash, but we keep being linked with centre-backs, and this centre-back that we've been linked with plays in the three at the back on the left-hand side. So this is Moreno here. So Moreno's your left-back, and Moreno's going to average position around there. So would Luca Dean if he's in the side. So when we shift into this shape here, I think it's going to be three centre-backs, Villa fans. I really think it's going to be three centre-backs. And we're really going to look to push this left back actively as a midfielder. So as you'd see, say, Liverpool. So Liverpool set up with Robertson, Van Dijk and Canate. And you've got then um, a midfielder here, whoever they're playing with. Trent's going into this area. Everybody shifts across. We've been sort of doing this on sort of like, kind of like, to not as an extreme, because you can see here now that Liverpool would be three at the back with Trent in central midfield. Now, if we do this for Villa now, so you're going to have, say, there's your right back going over there. So we've got our midfield as a double pivot. You've got Luis and Kamara. Moreno's gone further forward. We can commit a little bit more, in my opinion, to Moreno going further forward if we've got that strength of centre-backs playing there. When you've sort of got a, a, a right-back that sort of wants to go forward, but it doesn't, that's, you know, not an out-and-out -out solid right-back, but we're a bit in between. We're, we can't really go too much through here, can we? Because we don't have that strength here. But I think if you've got three centre-backs that are playing at the back here, you can kind of do that a little bit more. So it's something for us to think about, uh, but that's the way I see it going. We may we may play with something totally different here. We, we might not do what we've currently been doing, but I think it's really interesting to have this conversation of who would play where here if another defender is coming in because one of, you know, Torres is going to be first name on the team sheet. He's going to play. So one of Carlos... Konsa and Mings technically may potentially be missing out. So there we go. That's my thoughts on the defence at the minute then. So let's have a little look at Roger Ibanez then. Uh, and let's have a look how he did last season. So, so for score, solid seven. Absolute solid. Defensive rating of 78. Tactical of 74. Very, very good stats there. Very, very good. 24 years of age. Right-footed, so maybe he could go push further back to right-back, maybe. Maybe that's an option of moving his position then. Uh, but you can see on the heat map that this is where he's predominantly been playing. Strengths, ball interceptions, aerial draws, positioning, like I say, absolute unit, really strong, really solid. And that's what I would say he's really good at as well. Can step out, sort of out of defence and engage a little bit higher up the pitch as well. He's, he's not afraid to do that as well. So he played 33 games, started 32 last season, three goals, um, and he has a goal conversion of 10%. And this is what I want, I, I want to talk to you about here. Let's look at some of these stats here now. 88% passing accuracy, 93% passing accuracy in his own half, 78 in the opposition half, 10 clean sheets, 
two interceptions per game, two tackles per game, 2.8 clearances per game, successful dribbles, 65%, total duels won, 63 ground duels, 60 aerial duels, 69 These stats are, are, are absolutely insane. Uh, so those are his stats. Uh, if we have a look on transfer market, his market value is 30 million. He has won the Europa League with uh, Roma as well. If we have a look at his stats per 90, 87% pass accuracy. We've got two tackles, like I say, per game, interceptions. So very, very strong, really, really strong, powerful defender. Um, so again, it's another one, another interesting one to see where this would leave Aston Villa. I know you're all screaming at the screen still. We don't need defenders. We need attackers. I am with you, but they will come. It looks like we're really looking to get our house in order defensively because, like we keep saying, we play out from the back. So if we're playing out from the back here, so we're playing out from the back, we've got a goal kick. Our shape starts here. I'll go with this one, actually. Our shape starts here with this ball at Martinez's feet. So we've got to be comfortable. We've got to be strong. We've got to be good. We've got to get better at playing out from the back as well. So it really leads me to believe that he's, Emery is on it with this defence. He wants it sorted and the attackers can wait and we'll see what we can do as the window moves forward. But again, it's a, it's a link that I like. He's a great profile. He's a strong player. He's a really good player. And if Unai is looking to improve the defence and get that firing first and get it working, then you've got to trust Emery. You know, maybe he's cooking up a different type of system or tactics that we're currently not aware of. So I think we've got to think of it like that as well. So uh, very good player. Really like it. If it's going to make us more solid, Thumbs up from me. So, Villa fans, let me know your thoughts. Thanks, everybody, who's been watching our episodes and supporting the channel. You're all legends. Up the Villa.